the cherry trees are flowering outside my window in London, as they are in Japan and Washington DC. The famous Asian blue antelope Nilgai has been seen in the Le Corbusier design streets of Chandigarh in northern India. And wild Kashmiri goats are helping the citizens of Landudno in Wales keep their lawns and hedges trim. Commentators are heralding nature's return as CO2 emissions and pollution levels drop across the globe. Locked down as we are, it seems that nature is taking advantage. However, as we emerge from the COVID-19 emergency, we will have to plan to do more than give the planet a little time out. The media has been full of anxiety that COVID-19 might push climate change off the global agenda. Happily, public discussion seems to be shifting towards the view that we need to ensure long-term health and well-being for people and planet. Getting out of the coming recession involves developing pathways for sustainable global prosperity. This will require sustained systemic transformation, adaptation rather than mitigation, a way forward rather than a fix for the old broken system. At the core of such an approach is finance and how we use it. A first step is to ensure that both public and private finance and investment are redirected towards sectors, businesses and activities that protect communities, workers and the environment. Currently, the International Labour Organization estimates that COVID-19 will wipe out the equivalent of 195 million jobs worldwide. And Oxfam warns that half a billion people could be pushed back into poverty reversing the gains of the last 10 years. The cost of supporting economies is huge. The UK government's commitment to provide 80% of wages for furloughed staff will cost 40 to $50 billion over the next three months alone. So we need to plan now, not just on rescuing the old economy, but on how to connect workers to new jobs that create sustainable forms of value for all. One significant opportunity is the energy sector. Overall, the energy supply sector is the largest contributor to the global greenhouse gas emissions. To get anywhere near to the two degrees scenario, far-reaching decarbonisation is needed as we all know. Yet according to the IMF, the world subsidizes fossil fuels to the tune of around $5.2 trillion per year, or 6.5% of global GDP, if you take full social and environmental costs into account. Reducing the carbon intensity of electricity generation would improve the planet's health and drive massive transformation in our economies. More encouragingly, we already know how to do this because we are already taking the first steps along pathways to sustainable prosperity. We just need to accelerate and refocus our efforts. Before COVID-19, global oil and coal demand was dropping despite a growing population. Renewables are on track to be 50% of generation by 2035, and many countries will reach a tipping point in the coming five years where solar and wind capacity is competitive with the cost of conventional energy production. A new mobility revolution is also underway. Current projections are that in less than 10 years, the declining cost of batteries will mean that electric vehicles are more economic than internal combustion engines. Cars first, and then trucks, transport, global supply chains. A range of clean energy technologies are beginning to allow us to decouple CO2 emissions from economic growth. 
advanced digital solutions can optimize industrial processes and end product design, minimizing energy consumption and reducing waste. New, increasingly consumer-centric energy systems provide more choice for citizens and communities, delivering more relevant services, leading to a reduction in energy demand, more socially responsive behaviours and wider benefits in terms of health and environment. Energy demand reflects local dynamics. While OECD countries will see a decline, partly due to the development of more efficient technologies, demand in Africa and India is projected to double until about 2050. The future of energy is driven by a multitude of local trends, and these need to be accelerated across geographies and sectors. Africa, for example, has a vast endowment of renewable energy resources, but only 30% of people have access to electricity. What is needed is significant investment in a new economics of whole energy system transformation for the planet. At a current estimated cost of $900 billion per year, it will certainly be cheaper than fossil fuel subsidy. Electricity is key to what we produce, to the fabric of the digital world we inhabit, and to how we innovate and learn. If we want economies and communities to prosper alongside the planet, we need to accelerate what we already know works and transform faster and smarter.